It takes guts to be an organ donor. Today, I'm going to recap a 2012 action thriller film called The Package. A quick warning, there will be major spoilers ahead. The movie starts with a group of men hanging out a bowling alley. Soon, two tall, burly-looking men in black coats enter the place and talk to Lewis. Lewis owes some money to Big Doug and he's late. Tommy Wicker is one of the men who have come to collect the payment, but Louis's men attack him and are easily beaten by Tommy. Tommy and his partner get to Lewis and put his face on the bowling ball machine. As Lewis begs for forgiveness, Tommy threatens him. He lets a bowling ball break Lewis's nose and gives him another warning, saying he's letting him go easy. Next, we see Tommy and his partner at a doctor's clinic for a physical. Tommy goes in, and we get our mandatory shirtless shot as the guy looks in the mirror and says he's still got it good. Of course he does. Tommy then goes to see his boss, and they catch up on the payments he's collected from various people. Big Doug asks him about his wife and brother. We find out that Tommy's brother got in some trouble with Big Doug, and Tommy is working to pay off his debt. His boss tells him to deliver a mysterious package to a crime lord called the German, and he says that he will clear his brother's debt after this job. Tommy agrees and asks Big Doug what's in the package, but his boss tells him that he's being paid not to ask. Tommy takes the package and leaves, greeting Lewis on his way out, who was listening to their conversation. After Tommy leaves, we see Big Doug making a call to someone and letting them know that the package is on its way. That someone turns out to be the German himself. He gets out of his car and walks into a restaurant, where he's meeting up with Nicholas, another crime lord. Nicholas is mad about some silver that the German intercepted, and they have a tense back and forth. We also see that Nicholas has a couple of gunmen waiting to attack in the kitchen. Nicholas and the German call for a truce, and Nicholas offers to talk to the chef to get some lunch. But the German wasn't born yesterday. He sets down his sunglasses and grabs a knife from a table. Just as four gunmen enter the dining hall, he flips over a table and kills one of them. Using the guy's body as a shield, he miraculously survives three machine guns being emptied four feet away without getting hit, and uses his victim's gun to kill the three men. He then climbs into a vent to get to the kitchen, and attacks the remaining men, killing them all. He tracks down Nicholas hiding in the back kitchen, and stabs him with his knife. He watches his enemy die while sipping some alcohol, and is thoughtful enough to clean his weapon and leaves it to dry. We then shift to Tommy who is visiting his brother Eddie in the prison. He informs him about clearing his debt with Big Doug, and Eddie tells him that this is not Tommy's cross to bear. When Tommy said is that Eddie would have done the same for him, Eddie says that he probably wouldn't have cared. We get to know that Eddie does care for his brother, but he isn't too keen on Tommy doing the job for Big Doug, because if it goes south, he's locked up with Big Doug's friends and he would have to pay. The two of them part ways, and Tommy returns home to his wife to see the table is set and the wife walking around in a towel. After some sexy time, Darla asks him what he would do if a miracle happened. She also asks him if he thought about becoming a bouncer somewhere else, but he says it won't pay as much. And there is also the question of Eddie's debt that Tommy wants to cover. Darla nods in understanding, and they seem very much in love, but we find out that Tommy doesn't say I love you as wife, because in his defense she already knows how he feels about her. The next morning, Tommy and his partner are on their way to deliver the package. Julio is curious about what could be so important in such a tiny package, and Tommy says he doesn't want to know. Julio's curiosity gets the better of him and takes a peek. We see him frown, and he's about to say something when he is shot. Tommy loses control of the vehicle, and it turns over and crashes. Tommy is able to escape into a nearby shop as a group of mercenaries attack him. There is some gun action and Tommy is able to fight most of them off and escape, as one of the guys outside starts shooting at the store. The leader of the group is Devin, and he tells his surviving team that the guy they were told to attack was supposed to be a goon, a mere bouncer. But he turned out to be more skilled than they were told. They circle back to the gas station, from where Tommy had grabbed someone's bike and ran. Devin kills the owner after he watches the tape, and then calls his employer. This turns out to be Anthony, another crime lord who is involved in the gang war against the German. He berates Devin for messing up and warns him about the importance of the package. As we follow Anthony, we find out that Lewis has brought him info about the package and how it is worth enough to pay Tommy's brother's debt. Anthony, who wears a Burberry scarf and yellow tie, looks as harmful as your university professor, 
and wants to get his hands on the package so that he can negotiate a deal with the German. He asks Carl to share Tommy's picture everywhere so that they can get to him before he takes the package to the German. In the next scene, we see the German standing in his kitchen, preparing a smoothie. He talks about the benefits of each fruit he adds to the jug, and the camera pans to a bleeding man sitting in front of him. The German wants information on who sent the guy to his house. He seems calm and cool, with the occasional cough as he talks further about mackerel on buttered toast and how the guy will never be able to walk again. When he doesn't yield, the German threatens to kill his family as he finds the address in his wallet. The dying man gives up Anthony's name and is promptly shot. In the next scene, Carl, one of Anthony's men, informs him that the German has sent them video footage of him, killing the men sent by them to kill him at his house. Anthony is pissed off and gives a villainous monologue, because why not? We then finally get to Tommy who is in a public bathroom, cleaning his wounds and getting a change of clothes. Afterwards, he calls Big Doug and says that he wants out. Something doesn't feel good to him about the whole deal. His boss tells him that he can send someone else, but in turn he will have his pay, and he will not be able to survive and cover Eddie's debt at the same time. Helpless, Tommy agrees to continue with the mission and then calls Darla. They have a sweet exchange before Tommy hangs up on her and hitches a ride to Vancouver. Meanwhile, the German prepares a drink for a guest, food connoisseur that he is before they get up. They walk to a room with medical equipment in it and talk about the package, which the German informs is en route. Tommy then arrives in Vancouver and is immediately recognized by a security guard who contacts Carl. Carl then calls Devin and tells him to get to the location. Carl goes up to Tommy and the two of them get into a fight. The fight ends with Tommy pinning Carl down and almost killing him. He changes his mind and is about to walk away when Devin walks up. Devin's team member, Monique, quietly sneaks up behind Tommy as the two of them talk and tasers him. They take Tommy to their place where Monique ties him up and holds a surgical blade to his face. Anthony arrives and stops them, saying that the German would only negotiate if he's able to see Tommy alive. Anthony leans close to Tommy, asking him what's so special about him, before Tommy kills him with a single headbutt. Deva decides that they negotiate directly with the German. This, however, does not go according to plan, as Tommy is able to escape his binds, after an extremely lame attempt by Monique at a dangerous torture scene. He takes down Devin as well, and is about to leave, when one of Devin's men knocks him unconscious. Tommy wakes up tied to a bed, as a doctor and the German stand around him. They talk about their past and how the German had betrayed Tommy. The German says that he deserved it. Tommy asks what was in the package, and the German responds that the wallet contained some football tickets. Tommy is confused when he tells him that Tommy was the package. Big Doug sold him to the German. He lets the doctor explain how Tommy and the German share an extremely rare blood type, the HH blood type which the German wants, so that he can replace his diseased blood with Tommy's clean one. Since it's extremely hard to find a donor, the German had asked around the local crime lords. This is why Big Doug was making his men have physicals earlier in the movie. The German leaves the doctor to his work, but Tommy tricks the doctor. He lies that he has a condition which will make his blood lethal to the German. As the doctor leans close to listen to Tommy, he takes a bloody bite out of the doctor's neck. He breaks his bonds and fights off the guards who start to fire at him. Tommy makes his way out as the German intercepts him, and the two of them battle it out. After a long fight, Tommy shoots the German finally killing him. He then gets in a car and drives back home. The first thing he does is see Big Doug. Tommy grabs the shotgun from under the table and settles across from his boss. Big Doug tells him that it was simply a business deal, and he had no choice. If he hadn't handed him over, the German would have hurt Doug's entire family. Tommy is understandably pissed, but understands. Big Doug offers they go back to how things were, or they part ways with Eddie's debt clear. Tommy wishes Big Doug Godspeed and leaves. Next, he goes to see his brother. Eddie breaks down when he finds out that he is in no danger from Big Doug anymore. He promises to be better when he gets out of jail and Tommy nods. The two bump fist through the glass, reconciled at last. Lastly, Tommy goes to sell the car he got from the German's house and finds a huge amount of cash in its trunk. He calls Darla and tells her he's coming home the surprise. He finishes the call by telling her, I love you. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy hit the like button. And if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. You should watch the full movie.
Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more video like this.